Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Well, we have a lot to go over. First and foremost, S&P futures, new closing high, if we take a look at that, just coming in really right there, 53, 45, 25. What a lot of people don't like is the light volume, and I get it, especially going into the long weekend. But there's twofold. I think it's that, and I think it's NVIDIA's earnings. NVIDIA earnings are going to have a bigger move on the market than we think they are, quite frankly. Uh, Goldman and JP Morgan are basically saying it's going to be bigger than the CPI and non-farm payrolls. I do tend to believe that it's going to be that big, if not bigger. Comment below. I'm, I'm curious what people think, if they think it's going to be bigger or not. Also, comment below. Do you think they're going to beat or do you think they're going to miss? Um, I'm also curious if you think the stock's going to go up or down based upon that. But I, you know, if I, went up, if I had to put my bets in, I think they're going to beat and I actually think they're going to raise pretty considerably. And I think the integration's going better than expected. Uh, I'll get into my my, my theory on why I think that. And again, as always, I'll trade what happens. I don't trade my theories. I trade what actually happens. Uh, but I am leaning long right now. But if we just take a look at the ES the past five minutes, you're pretty well defined in there between that 53.26.75 and that 53.47.25, aren't you? So if you're whacking this thing around, you know your ranges. Uh, you, you, I think you had another 18 Fed speakers today. You had 7,200 yesterday. So you're just at a point right now where it's ridiculous. You know, this one's saying we have inflation. This one's saying it's going away. Um, they've actually done what I was hoping they would do, which was just completely diminish anything that they say. Frankly, they shouldn't be speaking the way that they are, but this is where we're at. So again, if we just look at the five-minute range, we're in this range. But there's really something, to me, very interesting going on under the hood. And I got your comments about the trading app up here using the TradingView app versus I can go through way more material that way and add more value. So we're going to keep rocking and rolling. But for those that trade the futures, these would be your demarcation lines tomorrow. Simple enough, not really rocket science, but there they are. If we got into the NQ and look there, stay with me. I'm going to have to adjust this as it comes over. That is the one thing with the app. If I have something set differently, that, that can happen. And I'm not going to edit. I just don't have the time. But if we look at NQ, you're at all-time highs. I think it's so fascinating that, you know, people are sitting here waiting for the end of the world and and we're just grinding higher. So sometimes, you know, just just don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Just take what you're getting. People say, well, what about what's happening? You know, this name's not going up. That name's not going up. You know, maybe you're in the wrong names. You know, do you ever think of that? And uh, we're going to get to that because I'm going to show you how to identify the right names. I gave you one tip on Saturday. I'm going to give you another one that if you've been watching for some time, you'll know this. But I think sometimes people forget the tools that they have. I always find it helpful to make a list of the tools that I'm supposed to use during the day and then go back and use those tools and then just check and go, hey, did I use those tools? And if the answer is no, then I just make sure that I use them the next day. I don't really beat myself up over it, but you know, just get back on track. It's no big deal. Now, if you look at the NQ, up, over, is that going to hold? I don't have a clue. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out tomorrow what we're dealing with. Quite frankly, does any of this really matter what these levels are, depending upon what NVIDIA could actually do to the market? Uh, I don't think people fully understand that it could drag up or down the indexes, each index itself, 2 or 3% just on their earnings. You know, NVIDIA is carrying the S&P on the growth side. It's them, Meta, and Amazon. So, you know, that, that that's really it. I mean, Apple's not doing it. Tesla's certainly not doing it. Microsoft's barely doing it. So you have, you know, Meta, Amazon, Google, and really NVIDIA has just been the lead dog on the growth side. Now, you know, if you don't have those seven names, you have negative earnings on the S&P, just FYI. Not a lot of people know that. But if you look here, you are seeing diversification. We're going to explain why. But if I was to look at the futures market, these would be the levels that I would trade. And I'm trying to pack more in and keep these condensed because we have a lot to go over. But again, there's not really much to add here for now. Now, when we start getting into the internals, you're going to find this fascinating. Well, at least I found it fascinating. But let's talk about Bitcoin for a second, because I think this is important. A lot of people are looking at this going, oh, it's over. Is it over? Is it not over? I think there's a squeeze out there. I'm not going to get too into why I'm going to do it this Saturday. Um, if it doesn't happen by then, I'm probably still going to do it this Saturday. If it doesn't happen by then, because it's pretty in-depth what I want to get into. But... And I want to do more work on it before I present it. But I do. I think there might be a squeeze out there. I think that might be one of the things you're seeing. It's pretty interesting that we just keep popping and pulling, popping and pulling. And every single time, you see these wicks down here on the weekly? Like every single time it should break, it doesn't. That tells you usually somebody's stuck. And I think I think I kind of figured out finally what's what's happening. But I'll get more into it on uh, I'll get more into it on Saturday. As always, Saturday's videos are a little longer. I will say this, that if we come here and we put a little line right there 
and then we clone the line, which you always want to clone the line because you want the same trajectory. And then you pop the line in right there, just like that. And you just want that same trajectory. You believe people charge $1,500 for a course for that? It's kind of scary, uh, but they do. And it's really not a, that big a deal. That's why there's actually a button that says clone on TradingView. So it's not like there's some like super secret thing there. Anyway, see these levels? I'd be paying real close attention to that. I really would. So I have I have some options. I got some out, out of the money calls on some of these things. We'll see, maybe they'll go, maybe they won't. But this is definitely a level that it, it's starting to get interesting to me. The fact that I got all these wicks to the downside and it's not one, it's just not, it's not one wick. It's weeks of it where they're coming down one, two, three, four, five. So like if I had one, I'd go, okay, but what, why is this level so important? You spend a little time because you realize that those weeks are made by days. Those days are made by hours, right? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's clean it all off now and just make it even easier and just drop it down. And then you just look at the battleground from there and you're like, okay, well, once you undercut this range right here, and we just move that up just a little bit, but once you cut undercut that range, like that was it. Then from that undercut, if you start to really get into it and you get super specific, you just drop that DTL, you're right there, downward trend line. That's pretty tight, guys. And here's your undercut. So if you flip, you almost have the, you know, the whole double bottom. Again, you could just clone this and it'll probably sit really nice right in there. But there's a lot going in there. See that clone button? I would use that pretty, pretty aggressively. But if you come here, that's a pretty big area. And the fact that you're holding and not giving anything back, I, I wouldn't sleep on it. That, that's all I'm saying. As somebody that was waiting for this to crack, um, you know the way that I am. Like, you know, one minute it's like, hey, it's the end of the world. This thing's going to fall apart. It's going to go back to $12. But, you know, in all seriousness, like, you're just not breaking. And and the undercut here, the failure over and over again, it can't be it can't be overstated enough. It's why I'm spending a lot of time on it. If you know me, you know I don't spend a lot of time with Bitcoin and the Ethereum and all that stuff. And there's, you know, people that understand the nuances much better than me. But technicals are technicals. And I look at the world through that stool lens that I go over at nauseum. And this is really important. So I want to spend some time on it. Now, before we get into the heat map and before we get into the sectors, I want to show you why they're both going to be important and how you can make money off of it. Now, in front of us are the advancing decline issues. And I have them correlated differently on this graph. And I will eventually make more of these available. So if you want to follow me on TradingView, you're more than welcome to. I think it's Arete. Uh, A-R-E-T-E, -E. no, that's not my name, 20706, it's the name of the company, um, and the trading community is called Alpha Chasers, in case people are trying to figure it out. Uh, I'm not a branding expert, guys, it's what I came up with, because it means something to me. But if you want to see how this is playing out, it's not rocket science, right? Red means what? Stop. Yellow means what? Uh, you might want to slow down a little bit of caution. Green means what? Go. Okay. And so I have these calculated that way. And that's how I have the advanced decline set up. All right. This is the NASDAQ. Now, what you're going to notice about the NASDAQ is what are we seeing with the advanced declines? Well, they're going down and the advanced declines here, are clearly it, when they turn, that's when you mark the bottom. I will use advanced declines like this, which will correlate very perfectly with a McClellan oscillator and how that calculates. It also calculate very nice with a MACD histogram. You overlay these, right? You kind of get a sense of it. You guys have seen some of my other maps before where I show you like the four horsemen all combined. But anyway, just remember that this is what the NASDAQ is. Now let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Now in front of you is the New York Stock Exchange. And what do you notice? You'll notice that you're staying up here a lot more, aren't you? This is a lot fuller historically than what we just saw with the NASDAQ. You can go back and forth and click the graph, but look at what we're seeing right here, right? So what is that telling you? that we're seeing diversification. You're seeing diversification through the New York Ex Stock Exchange more than you're just seeing through tech. That is very important. Broadening out is very important for a healthy market, but watch this. This is new highs, new lows on the New York Stock Exchange. See how high we are up here? See how broad and filled that is? Now watch this. Take a look at the NASDAQ in the same situation. See what we're dealing with right here? This is really important for us to get. Okay, this is really important for us to understand. They are broadening out, but wait, there's more. This is the S&P, new high, new low. So what is all this telling you? They're diversifying across the spectrum. In other words, they're no longer just in one field. And I think that's really important for us to get. They are diversifying. So if they are diversifying, what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to diversify. Why? 
They are the sharks, we are the remora. We don't move the market, they move the market. And we need to understand that. So what does this mean? This means that we need to use tools. Some of the tools that I've gone over in the past are sector rotation and how to determine sector rotation, the heat map we went through on Saturday. So let's do a little bit of that right now and take a look at the heat map. Now, I gotta move this over. And what we're gonna do with the heat map is we're gonna pop everything into it. And again, what I showed you with the heat map that you can do this with TradingView, and I'm sure you can do this on other ones as well. I could care less which one you use. But if you use the heat map and you're looking at this, it's, it's like, oh, well, this is great. I, I don't know what you do with this, except maybe you get excited because you like the pretty colors. But what you can do is get looking for the extremes. And so if I go here and now I just show me where the money's going, like that, you know, Tom Cruise movie, show me the money. And now you can see, okay, well, Tesla, they're buying, Lily, they're buying. Is that something that I can make money off of? Maybe, but this is completely different, right? Tesla's moving because everyone's gonna be driving a robo taxi and they're gonna be super thin. So like, all right, is there a theme there? Not really. And then you start going through it. Okay, well, maybe they're buying City because it's trading under book value, which is kind of insane if you think about it, but that's not really a theme. So then you start going, okay, well, what's going on here? Do we have any kind of theme? And to me, we do. The Utes, two Utes. So you have, what's a Ute? So CEG, VST, right in here, right? Okay, so now we have some of the AI power names moving. First Solar kind of fits in there as well, believe it or not and we're starting to see that diversification. So if we look at this, yeah, we do see a theme today. They are starting to buy some of the power names. Now you might say, I don't care about your silly little themes. And remember, when I look at the world, this is how I look at the world. I look top down. So I am always doing this. I am always going index, then sector, right? And then stock. That's how I view the world, why? Because I wanna know where the money's going. Because I'm not just trying to make like the little trade. I know you guys see the day trading, but it's really like 25 to 30 percent of what I do. You know, the real money that I make over time is when I bought. You know, for those that know this, um, well, you know, if you're in the community, but like when I bought Nvidia back here and I have that long-term position, or when we bought pins at 18, like that's and I'm, I still have that position. Like that's how I make my like money. I do well day trading, sure, but the the easier money is made on the long term and swing trades. Anyone that tells you that any any differently is just not being, you know, they're not being truthful. Um, can you make money day trading? Of course you can. And it's just the longer your time frame, the better you are. But if you can catch a theme, you can stay in a theme for years. The majority of guys, that's what they want. They want the theme and then just go get more money and keep plugging it into the theme. Take the day trading and plug that money into the theme, the swing trades. I, I can get into money management and do a whole class on that alone. I should probably do that live. It might be a lot of fun to go through that. Um, you can comment below on that, but I, I, I think that that's gonna be a pretty hot topic. So anyway, you can go here and look at the themes, right? So this is a big theme. People think it's over. I don't. I think it's far from over. So this is a theme we're looking at. You can go and take the antithesis of that and go look at the extremes and go, well, what are they pulling money out of? Well, all of a sudden they don't like transports. I don't have an answer for you on why transports aren't good. But maybe if I want to short or if I was long transports, I might want to look at that. I do note they keep hitting the hard drive companies for whatever reason. I have noticed that. Uh, AutoZone, you know, they're, they're tough to play, but I did notice that they are playing that. PANW, I know why that's down. It's kind of silly. We had a, a really good long-term trade in that. We actually bought it last night. If you watched last night's video, I walked through the entire trade and what I was doing, literally. These videos that come out during the weekdays, for those that are new, they are linked directly towards action that you can take and learn to process the next day or during the week. The Saturday videos set you up for the week and really get into the nuances and education if you haven't figured out how all this is linked together. And we're gonna get into some more linking, which I know everyone is thrilled about. But once you look at this and you go, okay, well, we're getting themes that way. What's another way you could tie and look at the themes that are going on right now? Well, I'm glad you asked. And again, apologies, but I'm not editing. I don't have the time. So here you are and you're going to the 21st, which is today. And what you have in front of you are 40 sectors. Now, the, out of these 40 sectors, I put them in a graph and then I can just look at them during the day. And then I would look for where the Qs are and go, okay, who's above the NASDAQ and who's outperforming? Who's above the S&P? Who's outperforming, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so I, if my sectors that I'm buying on the day are not above the NASDAQ or the S&P, what am I doing? Like, what's the point? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna catch the one that's gonna turn around because I'm so smart. I'm not that smart. I'd rather just find out what they're buying and then look at buying in the same area. And what we're gonna see is we're gonna see a theme. I think we're seeing a theme and we're seeing some energy names start to pop up. So they're going after some of these solar names, right? The first solar we saw today. So another one, FLNC, which I'll show you in a minute. Semis are getting bids. Why? 
All right, you're seeing some things going on there that we're going to talk about in a moment. But also we have some of these names like right in here where you're seeing like the, the clean energy names. You're seeing some of the consumer discretionary being bought, which I thought was kind of interesting. Some hit all-time highs today. This tells you everything you want between the heat map and this. Just the, doing these two things every single morning, boom. Oh, I know where money went last night. You can actually watch money. If you look at this during the day, which I, I do this, but if you just click on this, right, and you just watch this during the day, you can actually watch where money is moving during the day and just leave this on and go, oh, you know, for some reason they're buying, yeah, they started buying crypto and now they're not buying crypto. So do I want to do crypto trades or do I want to be looking at, well, maybe I should be looking at some of these solar names. And then all of a sudden you're out there going, you know what, I really want to do that. I want to start looking at the solar names. And then all of a sudden you're looking at something like for solar and you're going, huh, this is funny. I actually had this go off on a alert today at like 200 bucks on one of my alerts. I didn't do the trade because I'm very hyper-focused on another name right now, which I'll get into in a moment. But for me, once that went off, I, I always set alerts. Um, but once that went off, I was like, gosh, why am I looking at this pig? And then I remembered that it's linked to AI and uh, you know, the power, they're linking it to a power play in there. So, you know, solar's just been an absolute dumpster flyer floating down a river lately. But there are some names out there like First Solar and FLNC um, that actually showed some they showed a little bit today. So, you know, I, I wouldn't sleep on them, especially you come out with earnings, you dump and you can't break the 55. Do you want to look at that? It's, it's probably not the worst idea, but let's talk about some tinfoil hat stuff because that'll be fun. So what we've had the past week, well, we've had Druck and Miller come out and say that, you know, I don't really want to own this ahead of the quarter. Uh, I'm dumping it, even though long term it's undervalued. Go listen to a CNBC report. Go look ahead. It's undervalued. Uh, on the long term, but short term, maybe it's ahead of itself. So he dumps and you see the 13F that coincides the dump. Let's go take a look at his 13F in two months and see what's going on there. Um, and then just perfect timing, you know, just start seeing some more stuff come out. And then Amazon decides for some reason, 24 hours before earnings to say, we're gonna wait and buy the newer chip. So we're gonna hold off on that. And at the same time, Bloomberg decides to run an article that says what? Bloomberg runs an article that says, China any day might get into Taiwan right? All of this is really convenient, isn't it? For all of that to just happen to hit at the same exact time right before earnings. You know, I mean, if you had a pulpit and you could move stocks, would you do it? I mean, the answer is yes, you would. So when you understand the games, and again, I know that you guys aren't going to see all the games because you haven't been doing this as long, but over 20 something years of doing this, you can tell when the, where the games are. And I'll show you another game in a minute. But to us, this was really simple. And all we did with it was just pick it off and put on a trade. Uh, I'll just show you exactly how we did it right here. Take a look. I mean, what are you doing? Yeah, let's just buy a bunch. Okay. You're just going to whip. Let's buy some stock here. That's what you do. Now I'm in at 36. You want to cut there and I'm probably going to kick it and then go back and look at it again. I'm in at 36. Oh, there we go. That's nice. Pull a little bit out. Pull out a dollar just in case it does reverse. Go from there. And you're probably going to get fill now, right? Perfect. All right. So now we're up in that three and a half dollars. Let's trim more. How many of my calls did I get filled? None. Well, that's just mean. I'll right, just leave the rest on for now. I can't believe I didn't get filled on any of those. I thought they were reasonable. 36 and 19. I'm not chasing that. 43. Up seven on that ad. Trimmed more. Leave the rest on and break even. Thank you very much. So all we did was scale in right there, little pattern, boom, set the stop, quantify the risk, put the position on and let it work. As it traded up, in case we were wrong, what did we do? We pulled money out. And then you just leave the rest on for the rest of the day, which we did, and you were fine. I don't need to tell the stock where it's going to go. I know where the levels are, right? We know that the 50 level has been a problem. And then you look at what's happening at the end of the day. Now, why would a stock close, have an all-time high close with the China news, the Drucken Miller news last week, and Amazon saying we're not going to get those chips anymore? Why would that possibly close at a new high, right? And that's an all-time closing high on the name. You're, you were higher, but that's the closing high right there. Kind of interesting, isn't it? So then you kind of take a look at something like this on a one minute chart, and maybe you would just look at the volume on the day and then just say, you know, I wonder if there's anything on the volume scale that would be worth paying attention to. And then you just kind of look around and you're like, well, there's not really, except like, you know, you start seeing stuff like this at the end of the day. Well, that's interesting. That's a really big order at the end of the day, isn't it? Kind of like over a million shares, just market on close, right? And it didn't really move, did it? Something to think about, guys. It's not a small order, okay? It, that is not a small order. So, and they're the types of orders that people that can put together, you know, something like that. So there's your tinfoil hat talk for the day. Uh, but I've seen it before and I've seen it again. 
you know, I said this yesterday, and I'll give you another great example of this, and then you can join the Tinfoil Hat Club. Maybe I'll get hats made for all of us. TBA is technical buy area. This is where uh, we bought it in the community. Uh, invitations will go out next week. If you're on the wait list, just bear with me. I will have some time over the weekend to, to start sorting through the, the wait list again. Uh, if you're on there, great. If not, and you want to join, please get on the wait list. But do you think Jamie Dimon was purposely doing everyone a favor and saying our stock was too expensive here? Okay, that's what they said. Our stock's too expensive and I need to start looking at a succession plan. How long did that ruse last? What's a ruse? You can look it up. And then when you see how that happened, what happened the next day? We couldn't even make a lower low before we went higher. Goldman had one line in their research. JP Morgan raises earnings estimates for the year, but stock sells off. That was, that was their one line in their research this morning. It was hysterical because what they're basically saying without saying it is they're raising their guidance and people are selling the stock. Do you think he's trying to get the stock down so that they can do buybacks? I mean, you have to think you want to do what they do, not what they say.